Hi, I'm Steph Mischuk with KillerSites.com and KillerPHP.com. In this video blog, I wanted to talk about HTML5 and CSS3. Now, I'm recording this blog in late May 2010, just in case you're watching this a few years later. Right now, HTML5 and CSS3 is starting to get a lot of buzz. And the reason it's getting a lot of buzz is because it's extremely powerful. You can do some really cool stuff with HTML5 and uh, CSS3. And you're starting to see tutorials pop up and so on. And that's okay. Now, the thing I wanted to point out was, um, number one, because of the browsers that are being used out there today, widely on the World Wide Web, by most people, we're talking IE8, 7, Firefox 3.5, these browsers, as of today, do not support, do not run HTML5 or CSS3 for the most part. So what does that mean? That means you can't really build public websites today uh, with HTML5 or CSS3. And as you start doing some, uh, you know, browser sniffing, you start jumping through some hoops. Some browsers, the iPhone, the iPad, um, Google Chrome, and Safari do support HTML5 today, but the problem is it's still uh, a minority of the people out there on the web. So again, you're stuck. If you build for HTML5, if you build with HTML5, rather, you will be cutting out the majority of the web surfers um, today. So what are we looking at when I say, you know, it's over 60% use IE, some variation of IE. And today, as of today, IE is, you know, it's, it's, uh, it doesn't support any HTML5. So even Firefox 3.5 has very limited support. So you're kind of stuck. You can expect, I would imagine, to be able to use HTML5 on the public web Probably within three years, maybe four years, depending on how quickly people move from Internet Explorer 7 and 8 to the latest browsers with support HTML5. Some people may be thinking, well, that's quite a long time. Well, not really, because if you think about it, IE6, which is really old, it's a very old browser, maybe five, ten years old at this point, um, still people use that, you know. On killer sites, we're looking at 5% of the audience, which is amazing to me because killer sites, you know, it's about web design and web programming. And still, 5% of the audience still use a really old browser like IE6, a real pain in the neck. So I would imagine that the latest version of IE, IE8 today, uh, being that it does not support any HTML5, and we don't even talk about IE7, I don't think these things are going to be out of wide circulation for at least a few years, unless something really strange happens. So when it comes down to it, when you're thinking about HTML5, you can't think about it in terms of the public web. You can think about it in terms of if you're developing web applications or websites for, let's say, uh, an intranet, so it's a company-only website, and uh, you can control what browser people use. So you can tell people, you know, you have to use Safari or you have to use Chrome, etc. And then in that case, you can use HTML5, of course. And the other option is, is if you're designing specifically for iPad or iPhone or Android users. Android is, uh, if you don't know, Google's operating system. So any Android-based device will have uh, Chrome-enabled browsers, which will read HTML5 fully. So there you have it. HTML5 is cool. In fact, we're going to be coming out with a set of videos introducing some of the really cool aspects of it. But it's not a technology that's ready for the uh, public web, unfortunately.